The Las Vegas Raiders are on the field doing football-related stuff. Let's talk about it. We are literally one week away from the start of mandatory camp. You know, when a voluntary camp starts, and this happens every year, generally speaking, people show up on day one and day two, and then as camp kind of goes along, less and less players show up. Today, we had like seven or eight guys not show up to camp, and it doesn't really matter because it is not mandatory. Next week, when mandatory camp starts, that's when it'll actually matter. Now, uh, what's kind of interesting is one of the players that was not at camp was Andre James, who is the Raiders starting center. And interestingly, one of the questions we all have is who is going to be the backup center? And, and some people kind of question if James will even be the starter. I'm pretty confident Andre James will be the starter. But the backup center, most people would agree, should be someone like Dylan Parham. right? Because most people agree he is the guy that's going to push Andre James for that starting position. Well, interestingly, with Andre James out today, it wasn't Dylan Parham taking the center snaps. In fact, it was Hiranis Grasu who ended up getting majority of the snaps. And that's very surprising because I would have assumed it was Dylan Parham. Now, after Grasu, Alex Bars took some snaps at center. And then Dylan Parham got some snaps as well. But, you know, 11 on 11, it's happening right now, right? And, and, of course, not full speed. Guys aren't, you know, trying to kill the quarterback and, you know, vice versa. The offense linemen aren't punishing the linebackers. But they're definitely going 60, 70% out there. And what's interesting is Grasu took first string reps. And that's to me, that's kind of surprising. Now, I will also say this. Uh, Denzel Good also was not there. And I think that kind of maybe was one of the reasons why Dylan Parham didn't end up playing more center. Uh, but surprisingly, Dylan Parham wasn't even with the first stringers, right? Like Dylan Parham was technically with the second stringers. Uh, according to people that observed camp and keep in mind i wasn't there so this is just people that i've spoken to that have been at camp uh, basically it was colt miller at left tackle john simpson at left guard although in the past uh when denzel good was at, at camp uh, it was him that was in at the left guard spot not john simpson but for today because denzel good is also not there left tackle colt miller left guard john simpson center it was grassu with the first stringers which again it's kind of surprising uh grassu is is a veteran 30 years old so i guess that kind of makes sense um and then at the right guard position surprisingly we got some lester cotton at right guard which kind of surprises me you know i would assume that uh, if the right guard position isn't dylan parham that it would be someone like jermaine illuminor but lester cotton has been working and and they've they've thrown him in that right guard and an interesting note, Lester Cotton played right guard at Alabama and right tackle was Alex Heatherwood. So these guys have played next to each other. And of course, for the Raiders with the first string guys, Alex Heatherwood was in there taking the right tackle snaps. And he's been taking majority of the right tackle snaps, which is a great sign. And it's something that I want to see when the preseason comes around. I think the Raiders need to make sure Alex Heatherwood works at the right tackle position. If Alex Otherwood fails at the right tackle position, it's going to really set our team back because then we have to really figure out the right tackle spot. Now, some people want Daryl Williams. Some people want the Raiders to maybe get a guy like Isaiah Wynn, which, you know, I am open to those two guys. But ultimately, the best possible situation would be Alex Otherwood just wins that job. Again, you look at some guys like Lester Cotton, John Simpson. These guys are power football players. And uh, I saw a tweet by Vincent Monsignor who said, and I've uh, and I quote him, he said that the run game segment was very physical. It feels like the Raiders want to be intentional in the run game. And what's interesting about that is the fact that that makes sense, right? Like that 100% makes sense. The Raiders want to be physical. They want to be dominant. They want to impose their will. They want to do things to the defensive linemen that they don't want done to them, right? That is what our offensive line wants to do, or at least that's what the coach, the offensive line coach, the head coach, that's what they want the offensive line to do. And John Simpson, Lester Cotton, these are some physical football players. Uh, Alex Leatherwood, Dylan Parham, these are physical football players. And it is kind of surprising that Jermaine Illuminor wouldn't have taken the reps over uh, Lester Cotton at right guard, which also kind of makes me feel like maybe he's more so of the right tackle mold. Of course, we'll kind of see as camp kind of goes along. Um, and keep in mind, Illuminor has been taking right guard and right tackle reps, right? Again, I'm not sure exactly what the coach, offensive line coach and head coach think 
of Illuminor, but he has played right tackle in this system in the past, obviously with the Patriots. Uh, so it'll be very interesting. Obviously, Andre James Denzel Good were both out, so it's kind of interesting how the offense line's kind of shaping up. Um, I think Alex Bars could be a very underrated player. Uh, he's a name that I would keep, or he's a player I would keep, you know, keep, keep in mind because um, the Raiders do need a backup center, and don't just expect Dylan Parham to be the backup center, especially if he ends up winning the right guard job. You will need a whole different center. And I think Alex Barr is a name to kind of keep in mind. Obviously, Grassou took the first string reps today, so maybe the coaches feel like he's ahead of someone like Alex Bars. Either way, it's kind of interesting. Uh, another thing that was kind of interesting today, uh, we actually got footage, man. For the first time, I was able to see some footage. of, And maybe this isn't the first time. I, I guess I've seen some in the past, too. But Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams, I saw them running some routes. Demarcus Robinson, a couple other guys running routes and it's cool to see these guys actually running routes actually beating people uh and not not necessarily because they're not really covered but it's still cool to be able to see them kind of doing some things doing some different things um because our our offense is going to be explosive this year man hunter renfro Devontae adams darren waller josh jacobs Kenyon drake uh, potentially zamir white may get involved just depending on how he kind of transitions into the nfl but it's going to be very interesting to kind of see how the raiders shape out especially on the offense side of the ball. And I think guys like Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller, just to be able to watch them do these things in practice, uh, just to be able to watch a guy like Derek Carr and George Stidham or Nick Mullins, whoever it may be, throw passes to these guys, it's kind of interesting, right? Um, and I'm really looking forward to when preseason comes around. And I don't know if the Raiders plan to have these guys play in preseason. I know John Gruden's approach was to not have these guys play. But this isn't John Gruden's team anymore, anymore right? Uh, with the Patriots, the Patriots had Mac Jones and the first string offense play a ton last year during preseason. I think pretty much every game, the first stringers were, were, were playing. I could see Derek Carr and Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro out there running routes and, and playing. Um, and, you know, an interesting story that I, I want to quickly get into. Um, I, I know some guys that break down tape that really get into like super deep into the route tree, the route combos, uh, the different things that these receivers and tight ends may do uh, when you line up in specific formations. According to one guy that watched the Patriots in preseason and then went back and watched some of what they did like weeks one through five, apparently the Patriots in preseason were running things that they never ran ever again. Uh, and maybe it's to kind of put out like false tape right like week one comes around and whoever you're playing week one is going to take that preseason tape and really dissect it really break it down and then not to run those same things when week one comes around that's kind of an advantage for you and i almost feel like maybe they did it on purpose uh, and maybe the raiders will do it on purpose as well but uh, it is kind of interesting either way i'm excited for the offense man uh, another thing that i kind of saw this was during the pressers it, it really stuck out to me uh raiders defensive line coach frank oakham uh, said something about Cleveland Farrell. He said, when you have somebody as big and athletic as him, you want to get him on the field. He has been playing with really great effort. And you know what's crazy about that is I've always felt that Cleveland Farrell has so much talent, so much physical talent, and he just hasn't been able to put it together on the football field. And Frank Oakham acknowledges the fact that he's been playing with great effort, and then you take all of what his physical traits are, you know, if a guy is as talented as Cleveland Farrell physically, if he just plays with super high energy, super great effort, the way Max Crosby plays with, you should be able to have some success, right? Saltman Thomas kind of did that for the Raiders last year. And there's no way, there's no reason why Cleveland Farrell in year four couldn't do something similar. And, you know, this is Cleveland Farrell's contract year. Like, if he wants to get five plus million dollars next year on his contract, whoever he may sign with, this is the year to prove himself. Um, at the same time, if he wants to have a second, third, fourth opportunity, these are the times to prove it. Uh, and Frank Oakham, the defensive line coach, clearly sees something in Cleveland Farrell that he obviously likes. And I want to be able to see how Cleveland Farrell grows, right? Farrell's fourth overall pick has so much potential coming out of Clemson. He just couldn't ever put it together. And then in year three, he got benched. Uh, it was the third string guy. And then now going into year four, he's likely going to be the third or fourth string guy. But what's interesting is because Frank Oakham did say that Cleveland Farrell is big and athletic, does that mean Cleveland Farrell may jump to the inside? Does that mean Cleveland Farrell may end up being that 
three, four, or five technique player, right? The guy that lines up uh, between the center and the tackle, that guy that really plays big. That may be a thing. So never say never when it comes to Cleveland Farrell potentially moving to the inside. Effort is it's a real thing. Uh, another thing that I kind of saw, it, it was a tweet by Tashawn Reed, and it kind of got me thinking. Uh, he talked a little bit about how Jonathan Abrams has been playing like that two split safety look. And it really made me think, you know, like Cleveland Farrell's in his final year, but so is Jonathan Abrams. Like Jonathan Abrams in a contract year. Now, there's obviously a difference between the two, in my opinion. Uh, Cleveland Farrell, for the most part, has been healthy. He just hasn't been able to prove his talents. As opposed to Jonathan Abram has shown flashes, but he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Right, two completely different players. Um, and the thing with Jonathan Abram is he's pretty much missed like half of his career at this point. Right, he missed pretty much all of his first season. Uh, he played in most of his second season, but he missed like a third of his this past season, which was his third year. Um, and really, it just hasn't clicked for him. But maybe going back to that too high safety look is going to benefit Jonathan Abram. Uh, right now for the Raiders, the two starters, the projected starters, going to be Jonathan Abram and Trayvon Merrick, which most of us would have assumed. But that, you know, that may not have been a thing, right? Like this new scheme, this new scheme that we're bringing in, if Jonathan Abram doesn't fit it, if he can't play, if he isn't quick enough to do what's expected, Deron Harmon may step in and Roger Teamer may step in and Jonathan Abram may not play. Remember, Jonathan Abram, in my opinion, had his best year last year while he was healthy. I think he was number seven in Pro Bowl votes prior to his injury. Um, Jonathan Abram was a box safety. He was doing something completely different. It's much easier playing that one role over and over and over again. And the two highest split safety look, he's going to have to read and react and make plays on the ball, right? And that's so much different than what he was doing in the past. Either way, uh, I'm excited to really see what the roles for some of these guys is going to be. You know, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Adams. I want to see how Josh McDaniels uses these guys, what kind of routes, what kind of combinations that they run while they're out there. I want to see who ends up winning the right guard position. You know, is it Lester Cotton? Is it Jermaine Illuminor? Is it the rookie Dylan Parham? And I know, you know, we're, they're not fully padded, but the thing is, is a lot of what the coaching staff believes, right? like a lot of who they think is going to end up starting, they they know right like in their minds they know who they expect to win these jobs and those guys are going to have the first opportunity and 97 percent of the time those guys are going to win the job right nate hobbs coming out of nowhere is very rare that's that typically does not happen max crosby coming out of nowhere typically does not happen but this year who will be that next guy like is Dylan Parham going to start for the Raiders at right guard? He, he may not, right? Like, we all kind of expect him to. We all kind of expect Leatherwood to be the right tackle. But would you be surprised if Jermaine Illuminor or Lester Cotton end up starting at right guard? Would you be surprised if someone like Hironis Grasub ends up beating out Andre James? And I know that's not going to happen, but, you know, there's so much that could happen. Um, and I look forward to seeing what the Raiders end up doing this year, especially with some of the guys we've drafted last year and, and the year before that. Like, where are guys like Tyree Gillespie and Malcolm Koontz? Like, where's their development at? Is Divine Diablo a starting linebacker, or is he behind Jayen Brown as well as Denzel Perryman, right? Like, is Divine Diablo linebacker number three, or is that Denzel Perryman who's linebacker number three, right? So, it's going to be so interesting this year. Obviously, I think the coaches are getting it right, and I'm excited. I want to know what you guys think, man. Let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.